To write successfully, you have to be inspired. And whether that's an idea that piques your imagination or, or gives you a feeling, or that the music, on this record, it was the music that inspired me to, to write the lyric. I was getting so much from the music that the guys were laying down tracks, changing them around, having fun with them, and I was soaking it all up and getting inspired by the atmosphere of each track was, was really the, the way in for me on this record. I think you've got to be pretty down to earth to write songs. You, you can't, as soon as you start thinking of the bee's knees, <laughs> I'm sure you're going to make a bad lyric or yeah. make a bad call or... Yeah, I, I like that feeling of just being one of many people and not, you yeah. know, there's, there's a lot of people in this business that will glad hand you and pat you on the back and all that. And you, if that goes to your head, you, I think it shows up in your work. Yeah. Your work becomes just crapper. I try to write the lyrics so that you could read them. Yeah, it works that way. Yeah. But, Apple letters. But we got them in the wrong order and we left lines out. You know, every time you read a lyric sheet or something, you notice, oh, this is wrong, you know, if you're following along. You didn't say that. Um, yeah, they didn't say that. And um, I was determined this was going to be every... Exact word. Yeah, and of course, it was about five errors. I hate to be pinned down and asked about a message. I must say, I try and wriggle around that. Yeah. Try and wriggle out of it. I'm trying to come up with that. I guess message is the wrong word. Maybe themes. It's even worse. Themes is even worse. Yeah. At least Fair message enough. is kind of understandable. Yeah. But themes. You're right. It's more vague. You've got to run. It's, it's more, more vain. And vain. And vain. Performing is partly joy and partly terror. And you have to be able to to deal with both emo emotions simultaneously. And and make some sort of sense to people. But it is, what keeps touring alive for any unit is having fresh material to play to, to people because that keeps your, your interest and it gives you a lot of energy, almost uh, like you've got a mission. And I, I don't think touring would be much fun if you weren't doing that, if, if you were just like a revivalist action or something like that. It would get pretty dead in the water. Because you have to, it takes a lot of spirit to, to perform. You can really do a good show, but then you've got to fly to a new city and do another good show the following day. So it takes a lot out of you. The effort of making a record and touring it, promoting it, yeah. it really, it's a full-time occupation. And also, I've got kids in school, that's another bummer. Because there's no way you can go, hey, let's go to Bengal. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It takes the spontaneity out of life, but I'm looking forward to a time when I'll be able to go around a bit more and get down to Dijuka, check <laughs> it out. Touring is strange. It's, it's like traveling, but it isn't. Yeah. Because you, mostly you, you, you're shattered. Mm -hmm. And also you've got to move fast because the tour is like a Pac-Man. It, mm -hmm. it has to happen. It, you know, it has to be kept financially afloat, so yeah. you can't linger. I wish it was a, a bit different, really. It would be nice to spend a week in every joint, in every city, and then mm -hmm. and then play the gig, because you could really yeah. see something. Yeah. Or, but the way it goes, it just goes bang, bang, bang. And so it is traveling, but it's not like really traveling. Yeah, you can't get... You can't get all the, the feeling. Yeah. Although you, you can see it briefly, but it's not really like traveling, traveling. I don't like to know where we're going, actually. Just the element of surprise? Yeah. Now why, why is that? Is because that... you always end up somewhere interesting. <coughs> you know, if you have a specific aim or target, mm -hmm. and then you arrive at that point, whatever, like the creation of a project or some sort of... It's like boring. You know, you, you're going to end up there, and finally you end up there, and it's like... There's no fun in that somehow. It's, there's no surprises in it. There's no uh, there's no chance in it. This is all a, this is a construction of chaos, really. And one more thing. Yes, sir. Here's one of the downsides of the internet. I see. I write the set. Sorry, talking about set lists. I write them every night. But on the internet, they're onto your game because everybody knows what you already played 
down the road in Philly last Saturday night. So that kind of gets me a bit pissed there that it's taken away the surprise that you can, because back in the day, you know, you turn up in Kentucky, no one knows what you're going to play. And it was kind of fun bombing in the surprises there, but that internet is too damn smart for its own good. We're talking on the afternoon of the first Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros tour date for this American tour in Washington, D.C. And a lot of bands have recently rethought their plans for touring the U.S. Some have canceled their tours of the U.S. And even some American bands have scaled back in light of the current situation in the world, the terrorist attacks, possible military retaliation. Did that at all enter your mind? No. Safety is an issue? <laughs> no. Um, the only thing that really entered our minds was, would it be appropriate to tour in, in the aftermath of, of such an attack? But, and I've got friends in New York, so I'd just call them as the days went by, and they gave me the temperature of the city, you know, what people were thinking. And with their advice, they said, no, sh come as planned, you know. So I took their advice and, um, well, we'd already, it was booked months ago, so we, we just went ahead with it. And here we are in D.C. And I want to say to anyone listening is, go out and see groups and films, you know, because a lot of people want to stay at home. But I, I think that's um, futile. <laughs> what do you think of the G8 summit? Well, because they decide everything before they go there, it does seem mm -hmm. like a... I mean, you can see that they want a showpiece, but it's almost like a photo opportunity for them, and you can see why people are angry. I think people feel they can't affect anything, and it's all decided behind closed doors, you know, the important things in the world, and that leads people to rage and anger. Everything in Britain is falling apart, yet you can guarantee your car will be towed at one minute out. Right on time. Yeah. How come they can't run the rest of the world like that? We, maybe we should elect these parking people to, yeah, to the down. government. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're sitting on the fence while policemen are going, hey, this is stupid, you know. Six million people are smoking marijuana. How can we stop that? And it's policemen saying we've got to change the law, not politicians, because the politicians are too frightened. You know, there ain't one among them who's really going to stand up and say, yeah, let's change this law, it, it ain't working because they're worried about losing the core vote of the Middle Englanders. You can, you can imagine, you know, they, they don't want to lose the vote that got them elected. And so that's why I don't think anything will...